so uh, how's the quarantine uh, for you how is it going so far um quarantine it's, it's a, at the beginning it was very nice because you kind of need time with your family and time with yeah. uh, just catching up on other things you couldn't but then now after uh, three odd days no uh, i just want to get back out there and just play but it's likely from tomorrow we can actually start going outside and running um so that's i'm looking forward to that oh is it i mean you guys are allowed now to go out and and start running on the yeah i'm going to make use of road running i'm not a fan of road running but i'm going to start making use of that i see a lot of uh, cricketers in uk are making the most of of the roads available and they are yeah. basically running and uploading their pics and videos on instagram Yeah but it's amazing how we always took advantage of little things but then now um you actually want time outside and you want to do certain <laughs> things I think after the whole quarantine um I think we're going to be new people I don't know <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure there's there's so much that this quarantine has taught us uh and I'm sure people would now become more conscious about their health about their physical fitness uh um, mm. which, which was something you know previously ignored by a lot of us but now yeah. that you know, the nature is is teaching us a lot of things in its own way teaching us a lot of patience <laughs> so yeah great great so let's quickly dive deep and learn about about your starting days about your childhood days uh what i have also read is that you transitioned from a hockey player uh then to becoming a cricket player so yeah to tell us more about this transition how and where did it all happen um i always thought that um i was going to be an olympian hockey player uh, oh. that was that was my mindset from a very young age and uh, i actually made it all the way to the women's squad for hockey and yeah. then Uh, but it was also at that time where I kind of had to choose between the two so I couldn't carry on I had to only choose one and I remember my earliest memories of cricket actually started at age 13 where hockey was from age 5 okay. so you can see the difference like my mind was always um hockey but then I I feel like cricket I be the more I watch like test match cricket like on TV the more I was like okay I actually want to play that Okay how popular is is hockey in South Africa um in the school system like yeah. um high school um yeah. it's very popular like okay. the majority of the like girls um at, at school they play hockey um it's actually one of the main sports for me from where i come from hockey was like the main um sport for girls okay interesting Yeah, have you mm-hmm. heard about uh, uh, Jemima Rodriguez the indian player yeah, yeah. So, yeah again she she also plays two sports and she has also played hockey at a at a very professional level she has she was there was a time in her life as well when she had to choose between hockey and cricket and because mm-hmm. hockey is again it's a national sport of india but uh, cricket of course you know it's it's not just a sport yeah. it's a religion and and there's so many reasons why one would transition from a hockey or to any sport yeah. than than taking up cricket and she obviously chose cricket and we all you know have seen the wonder that she has done in the international cricket exactly like i i remember when i finally told like my university coaches that i was done with hockey they were very disappointed because it was it was my senior year like that's when i was actually like one of the senior players and obviously like you work so hard to get to that point and we were all looking forward to the season and i walked just before the season started um i did the whole pre-season with the team but something told me i can't carry on because i remember i used to wake up at five o'clock every morning so i can actually make the fitness for hockey because oh. fitness started like six o'clock in the morning so you're oh. either in the gym or you're at the extra turf running and straight after that i quickly ran back home ate breakfast and then i go to cricket practice and i was like i can't <laughs> um, physically my body and mentally i don't know like it was really tough and i remember walking into the office um 
the director of the hockey program at university. He knew. As soon as I walked in, I scheduled, he knew. And, but my coach wasn't very happy. <laughs> he was not pleased with me. I'm sure it would have been a you know, very difficult decision for you as well. Uh, you know, do you still play hockey or do you have completely moved to cricket? I coach. I coach hockey. Um, okay, wow. I'll, wow. Never, I'll never let it go. I'll always try to help where I can. And like there's those odd club games, just the fun, where my friends will be like, okay, come play. And I'm like, I'm like... <laughs> Then I'll play like instead of like the full hour, I like just play twenty minutes of like okay, I'm I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So growing up, uh, uh, who were your role models? Uh, if I had to ask you, um, you know, the main reason I actually started uh, playing cricket was because of Makai and Tini and how. My mom at that time they like idolized him because he was like one of the boy like the men that actually grew pot. So my mom kept saying, my client teeny, my client teeny. And I remember saying, no, the mm. Dutch hockey team, the Dutch hockey team, the Dutch hockey team. So from there, um, then I actually started watching tests because of Makaya. Uh, okay. I started watching cricket because of them. And then I remember Mark Boucher um, used to catch like blinders. And yeah. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. I want to be a part of that. And that's where I started watching more. I started studying the game more. And that's how I actually came about. And it's my passion. Okay. So you always wanted to be a wicketkeeper or uh... <laughs> tell us more about it. Um, I always used to like, I was the fastest bowler. As I said, my kind TV. So he was a bowler. So, Thank and I you. also, because of hockey, I was good, like, at uh, hand-eye coordination with the bat. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be an all-rounder. Um, it worked out up until I was 15 years old when the coach just came with wicket keeping class. And I'm like, oh, these are nice. <laughs> what are they for? <laughs> and she's like, it's for you. I'm like, no. <laughs> Not for me. It can't be. And, oh, I, I didn't like my coach at that moment. Like, Angelique Kai, she's actually an ex uh cricket um essay cricketer um she coached me um from age 14 up until age 18 okay. and i remember looking at her and i'm like no i don't want the gloves the ball is hard it's so and i want to i just want to bowl i was so inspired by bowling you don't get it <laughs> and then i realized okay no i'm not the best bowler Okay, so initially you wanted to become a bowler, but then your coach handed you the gloves, and that's how the journey began. Yeah, um, we fought a lot about that because I was very stubborn. I said, No, I'm gonna be a bowler and I'm gonna be a batter. And she's like, No, you're gonna be a keeper and you're gonna bat. And I was like, No, you don't get what I'm trying to tell you. And I think when I was for a whole two years, I was stubborn. But I still went to training and did what I was supposed to do. But at the same time, my mind was like, no. And the switch happened when I was um, 18 and I actually made the SA under 19 side. And I was the captain of that side. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm not that bad. Uh, and then I started actually taking it seriously. So what age did you start playing or taking cricket seriously? Uh, and that you decided that, you know, maybe I should now focus and put all of my energy into cricket. What um, age was it? After I made after I made the SA under 18 side, um, under 19, because I was supposed to, because I went to university on a scholarship for hockey. So initially I was going to give it up after that last tournament. Because um, okay. hockey usually happens in June and then cricket happens in December, where it's like, yeah. So it's like provincial in June, provincial in December. And I remember signing um, to say, I'm going to go to university for hockey. Uh, I already signed. I already signed um, my scholarship. I already, I was going. And then the essay happened and I was like, wait a minute. Ah? So when I got to university, the, the provincial coach of the university I was going to, uh, Northwest Cricket, um, they got in contact with me. Um, but I was still very stubborn saying, I don't think I want to play. As an 18-year-old, you just want to make every, like your coach happy in hockey. 
And I think it's the first season, but I actually took it seriously at age 20. At 20? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. And, yeah. uh, for and now I'm 25. <laughs> Okay, so for how many years did you play the domestic cricket? The uh, so in in India we call it domestic cricket. Yeah, uh, yeah, we also do, but we just say provincial first before provincial. Say provincial cricket. So for how many years did yeah. you play before making your mark in the international cricket? Um, I started in border, so I I played border women's uh from age fifteen. Okay. Um, till 18 and then from age 18 till 24 I was in Northwest and I just moved to Western Province now this year well this season oh, okay great there, there's also a lot of uh, improvements in the domestic uh, structure uh, in the South African cricket so tell us more about that because I see there's T20 tournament which has been which was organized last year just before the World Cup, so that you know the girls get good amount of practice. Uh, yeah. What exactly the structure uh, looks like, the domestic structure of women's cricket in South Africa? Um, so basically, we have like a lot of yeah, like youngsters in the team, so high school um, uh, kids. So it's actually very nice to see. So with the Super League, um, I remember how many high school kids did we have in our team? We had three. And they they were from age 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 15 and 16 years old. And I mean, they were actually doing really well. Um, I remember we call her Clanky. Um, she was doing really well. Like she's a medium pacer. And as a wicket keeper, like her running in and bowling to me, um, it was actually really nice to see about, she un- she understood her plan. And it's really nice. And Andri uh, Hroblar, she actually made the essay under 19 for but since of uh the COVID-19 everything has just been postponed yeah. so yeah. she's the other wicket keeper and she's actually here in Western Province with me and the amount of training she does and she's actually also a hockey player so it's really nice I'm like okay this is exciting we both wicket keepers we both play hockey it's actually quite nice um, I've got a partner she, yeah um it's really nice oh, okay okay so uh at 21, you made your uh, national debut, your international debut playing against New Zealand. Mm. Okay. Uh, oh. Who told you about this, This uh, that you are selected for the national team and that now you will be part of the international squad? Uh, so basically, it started the beginning of 2015, mm. uh, where England came down mm. um, for a series. And I remember getting a call up, but they said I wasn't going to play. So I knew immediately I'm not going to play. It's just to see uh, the team environment, how everyone was just being around like the senior players. So I knew going in there, I wasn't going to play against England. I was just there to learn, to train. So, but I didn't even know what was going on. I was like, oh, I'm away from university. Cheers, I'm, I'm going. Um, and I remember just being a part of that and actually seeing how for they are and where I'm at. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought, <laughs> yeah. And I remember entering the change room, which is so scary. Oh, scary. And because naturally, like, I'm, I think I'm a confident person, but when you walk in there, you're like, ooh, what now? And I remember um, just watching Catherine Brandt um, mm-hmm. bowling, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not playing. And then I remember <laughs> leading up to my debut. And then after that series, something in me just switched on where I was like, okay, maybe I really do want to play this, but what about hockey? So I was always fighting with my, my, my mind. Uh-huh. And then I remember leading up to my debut, um, it wasn't easy. So I was never sure whether I'm going to get picked again because you never know. You can't control it. Mm. But I knew I could control what I do in domestic cricket. So if I mm. do well there, mm. then it's just going to be better. And I remember getting the call up and um, firstly, Clinton Dupree um, called me and I was like, be joking, can't be. Um, it's just always like that. It's just, I was like, no. Yeah, cut it, cut it. No, I'm not going to play. <laughs> and he just said, you first have to play with the SA emerging side mm-hmm. and then 
from there, you're going to travel with uh, the team analyst to Kimberley. And I remember being in the car with them and we were just chatting. I was like, am I really going to be part of this? <laughs> so, and I remember, like, I was such a naive um, yeah. kid that I didn't know. It's my first time. I'm 21, like, I'm 20 years old. Uh, 21 years old but still like yeah. my brain was like a 16 year old kid because I didn't know what I expect and I remember the first like the first couple of ODIs I missed um which I didn't mind um because I was more I'd rather be ready a hundred percent before yeah. I play and I felt like at that moment in time I was never ready and then I remember that it got to me that I was benching but at the same time I had to be positive for my team and the morning of the game, I was like, okay, business as usual. I'm going to high energy, make sure the team are hydrated. That was my mindset. Just hydrate everyone, make sure they have their water schedules. Like, I remember I memorized uh, Marizan, um, her rhythm. I, I, like, I knew after every first over, I quickly have to run around with um, a hairband, uh, like a banana and water. But her water had to be like a specific <laughs> convey. <laughs> and I remember like I walked um after just before the warm-up. So coach says to me, listen, so you're gonna play today. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> Can then, you repeat um, that to you? <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember Dane uh Fanika like kicked me on the back and like, okay cool and I remember going to the bathroom um, I might have vomited a bit there and then I was like okay let's go and as soon as I stepped over that line to go uh, we could keep like something in me just automatically just said okay just take it as any other game um, I wasn't worried about what's going to happen after I mean everyone makes mistakes like and we just learn from them Amazing. So, how was the you know how was it like uh, sharing the dressing room with with some of those uh, experienced and senior players, Minion Dupree's, uh, Marion Cap, Danewan Nikirk. W- um, were they were they all nice with you, or uh, is there some sort of bullying which happens with the junior players with the newcomers? No, not at all. Like I, I feel like. From personal experience, like um, when you're coming in as a, a junior or a young senior team, obviously they've worked so hard to get where they are. And my motivation, um, and still is my motivation, that one day I grow um, into a player that, as when a youngster also comes in, I can be that support system they also need. And I know uh, when I came in, um, I'm not saying I was dependent on anyone, but obviously, like you look up to, you see that the their routine, and you see you don't want to do the same thing, but you kind of need to have a routine. And I remember, obviously, entering the change room, I kind of walked in last to kind of see where I can put my bag, because obviously, imagine walking in first and you're like, yeah, and um, they're very calm individuals, all of them, very calm, and that kind of puts you at ease too. So. It was really nice to see. So they just focused on doing their job correctly and they expect everyone else to just focus on what you do also. So then when it comes together as a team, then you just put in the same amount. Correct. And South Africa you know, did win that match uh, with just eight balls remaining and uh, it was a very close match. So can can a debut match get any special than this? No. <laughs> no, it was, it was a really good game. What What were your parents' reaction? What What were your friends and family members' reaction when they came to know that you know you have been picked up in the national side? Um, my mom was never like a fan of my cricket career or hockey career. She just wanted me to go to university, uh, get a degree, hopefully be a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. Those are the top three. Doctor, lawyer, accountant, between those three. And okay. I'm like, I'm not really smart for all those three. <laughs> <laughs> and even though I went into university for human movement sciences and psychology, um, she was still like, 
maybe you can be a psychologist. I was like, I don't have patience for to listen to people's problems, but um, <laughs> and I remember um, my mom didn't know, and I remember after the game, I was like, okay, I made my debut, and she was like, what's that? <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I played my first game. She knew I was at the 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 the, the series against New Zealand, but she just didn't know I wasn't playing before. Okay. Uh, she thought like everyone plays, all 14. That's how naive <laughs> my mother is. And I was like, no, it's only 11. And she's like, what's the point of that? So you can imagine like how, you know, my mom doesn't understand cricket. To this day, she doesn't understand cricket. Um, okay. If we teach her, if my brother and I teach her, it goes in this year, out that year. So we just give up. Okay. And I remember like my friends, they were like, you play cricket? So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was basically a surprise for, for everyone in your family and your friends. That Jaffa yeah. is playing cricket. Yeah, because it was always like hockey and then cricket. They knew I played cricket, but they only thought I was playing domestic mm. cricket. So, Talk us about your T20 experience. Did you expect that call-up? It was against Pakistan. Yeah. Um, so in Pakistan, what happened was um, Trisha Chitty was injured. Mm-hmm. So, and um, I got the call up, but before that, I, I was in and out of the side. I was never like, um, I missed out on a lot of like tours and I missed out on a lot. And mm-hmm. that's personally because of me, because I wasn't really motivated after the World Cup. I, after I made my debut, I got dropped. So I wasn't really motivated in. Um, in playing cricket because I was like I was in and out and okay. it, it does that like to your mindset it, it kind of like messes you up that and I remember I wasn't really motivated and then I remember in January just before I got invited to the camp mm. and I was like okay it's my first camp in like over a year so you can imagine like and I remember just being just being around everyone again I was like I actually missed them mm. um and then after the end of the season, so our, our season ended just before Pakistan. Okay. And the team came out and I was like, okay, okay, okay cool. Um, and when I got there, I actually didn't have any expectations to play because Lazar was also there, even though Trisha was injured. Right. And when Coach Hilton Murray said, okay, you're going to play, um, I was like, Oh, okay, cool. But inside, I was stressing. I was like, ooh, first international game in like more than a year and a half. Cool, yeah, let's play. Exactly. Um, and then ever since then, I just fell in love with it again. Um, and I mean, I worked with quite a few like uh, psychologists, so my mindset just changed. And yeah. Okay. So wicket keeping, they say, you know, it's a thankless job, uh, and also it's it's one of the most important tasks uh, because the wicket keeper has to look after everything. You have got to you know, make your field sets. You got to tell the bowlers that you know this is the area that you should be bowling in. Uh, you have to basically squat to what 300 balls in an ODI match, and if it's a T20 game, you know, 120 time you're just out there concentrating on each and every bowl. So uh, what does it take to be a, a good wicket keeper? Um, my biggest thing is I'd start with your fitness. Um, yeah. Because you constantly have to go up and down sideways. So okay. I think you have to make sure that you very you got a very strong core um blue hamstring like literally you're full you have to be physically fit Absolutely. So, yeah because you have to also be explosive if you have to go dive for that ball you have to and um but we also tend to neglect you have to be strong here um i'm a firm believer in if you're not strong here then you're gonna be 50 50 so I've, i'm a firm believer in making sure your mental state is also good um and obviously have a rhythm because I know my rhythm now is switch on when the bowler approaches. And then as soon as I catch the ball and let it go to my slip fielder, I say, okay, switch off. Then I'll look around and see if my angles are all good. And then I'll just start the cycle over and over and 
And yeah. sometimes when I don't do it, that's when I make my most, the most mistakes. And I feel like physicality and your mental aspect has to be like close to 100% as you can. Yeah. Yeah. So which wicket keeper from the international circuit, uh, be it men or women, uh, who do you idolize and who do you look up to? Um, I remember growing up, I used to watch Mark Bartra, obviously. Um, that's when I got given the gloves, because when I got given the gloves in 2010, he was still with the SA men. And, and I remember, okay, I was like, okay, fine. If my coach really wants me to do this, I'll study this guy. And then straight after that, MS Dhoni. Um, okay. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, okay. Here's another exciting wicket keeper. And I remember my first series watching uh, Sarah Taylor. Uh, okay. Sarah Taylor is brilliant. But I will say, for me, um, Trisha Chetty, training alongside of her, like, it's really inspiring. Like, her hands are incredibly quick. And just to see that and um, working with her, it helped me a lot. It challenged me, which is very good. To just Amazing. become... Yeah. Amazing. You had also mentioned in one of the interviews that you also look up to Elisa Healy, the Australian wicket keeper. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just the way, like she's, she, like just her, her body language when she when she's keeping. Like I remember um, watching her in the final. Like um, she was, she's amazing. Like she's really, really brilliant. Um, hopefully one day, soon. Hopefully I'll be <laughs> good. Okay. I was about to ask you. My next question was that. You know, from the international circuit, which bowler would you like to keep for? Uh, I'll have to go with my own teammate, Kadim Ishmael. Um, she's so consistent in the line that she bowls that it's the keeper's dream. Um, you kind of know when she's going to have the in swinger or the out swinger or just skid on. So it's really nice to. She just when she's running down and like the rhythm that she goes with. Yeah. Um, it's like graceful, so graceful. And as a keeper, like it, she challenges you to just want to be better. Um, and she expects a lot from you. Um, so I have to go with my own teammate there. That makes the wicket keeping job a lot more easier, right? When you know that the particular bowler has a rhythm and he or she yeah. is going to ball in those areas only. Yeah, and I remember the first time um, I kept to a bounce, I kind of let it go on purpose because I was like, I'm going to break my finger. Um, <laughs> um, you all, that is quick. Oof. Okay, okay. <laughs> in, the year, in the year 2019, you also played for this Women's C20 Super League in the team of Dave Narayan Levin. Tell us more about this tournament. Uh, you know, how many players have we seen come up through the ranks? from this particular tournament and how is it today becoming a feeder for the national setup? Um, for me, the one player that actually shown so much promise from the Super League is Nomkulu Lekum Laba. We call her lefty. She yeah. was uh, the left um, orthodox spinner. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just to see her growth, because she also played with me in the Devna Ryan 11. And just to see her growth and um, she's 19 years old, but she can still hold her own in an international stage. For me, it, it's so promising to see um, all like the youngsters coming up. And obviously, it's a perfect opportunity for them to also learn from all the national players because all of the national players were a part of that and like separated amongst the team. So it's just a good stepping stone. But like now with COVID-19, you don't know what's going to happen if Correct. we're going to have it again. So you, you don't know. Okay. 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 So, Zafta, so far you've got eight ODIs and 60 20s to your name. What would be your ultimate goal in, in professional cricket? Something that you you like want to achieve in this particular field? Um. So for me, like, however many games I play, it's, it's, it's not important. I can play over 100 games, I can just play 50. Uh, my biggest thing is just to make an impact. And my my motivation is actually for the younger kid. Um, one day when I, I actually retire, whether it's on my terms or 
you never know. I just want to ensure that um, I was like a role model. And um, the, I, first and foremost, um, for me, I'm passionate about education. Um, whether you're educated in cricket or with your books, just to study and become a master of that certain um, aspect. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, like statistics speak a lot about your cricket, but I feel like who you are and your body language and how you are as a player, like, for example, you can be like, yo, this is like an aggressive cricketer, like something like that, like just to, for people to kind of have like that set image about who you are, like people like always, like take Shabneem Ishmael, she's so nice off the field, but when you're on the field, you don't want to face her. Like personally, when we play domestic cricket, I don't want to face her because she's so aggressive. Um, and like, that's the type of like, Thing that I want to leave. Like, I'm a fun, goofy type of person. Like, I'm really laid back. But obviously, when it's time to do your job, you kind of switch on and you switch off, as I said. Correct, correct, correct. See, last, uh, if I had to say, last two to three years has been very special for the South African women's cricket. Uh, I've been following uh, the, the team since last five, uh, five six years. And the trend, the exponential growth, the progress that I have seen uh, has been massive. Uh, right from the 2017 World Cup onwards, the team, you know, has made sure that they they perform very well at uh, all the international stages that they play, be it the bilateral matches or be, be it the ICC tournament. We also mm -hmm. saw that, you know, this was the first time that they reached the semifinals of an ICC tournament. Last, just last month uh, in the ICC T20 World Cup. Uh, what do you have to say about the performance firstly? And secondly, where do you see this team you know, going and going from here on? Um, I remember, like, I must start on um, World Cup selection, but at the same time, like, I'm still part of the team. Yeah. And I actually, like, I remember watching the semi-final against Australia and I actually got goosebumps just to see how far we've come um, as a team. And, like, I'm so proud of, like, the girls. And the thing is, they represent the country and coming off from an amazing Rugby World Cup to this, it was just, like, an amazing season, if I put it like that. The netball girls, um, the rugby, the men, and now it was us. And the thing is, like, I feel like, we they work so hard for it and it's just like a shame that rain came in so you never know what's going to happen and I feel like it's just like a positive thing to see leading up to the ICC World Cup now next year the fifth over it's just like a step in the right direction um we can't dwell on what happened in Australia but we can change what happens in the future absolutely we have got two World Cups lined up there's 2021 50 over World Cup next year in New Zealand and just after that we'll also have uh, the another T20 World Cup in 2022. Perfect. My next question is uh, recently the South African Cricket Board has also announced national contracts and uh, you of course you have also made a place in the contract system. Uh, how important do you think uh, is the national contract in the players in a cricketer's development? And of course, it adds a lot of stability. It gives you financial security. Uh, how can that lead to the further improvement and progress in a cricketer's journey? Um, with the national contract, um, if I'm being honest, um, it's just, as you said, uh, financial stability. But at the same time, it's just that feeling of waking up every morning and like, I'm actually doing what I'm passionate about. So, for me personally, for me to train, it doesn't feel like a chore. It feels like I get to do this every single day. And it's just, for me, getting paid for, for playing is just a bonus. Um, I think back to how the steps I had to take to get there. It, it, it wasn't an easy task, but at the same time, it's just that uh, reconciliation that you okay you're getting paid for it um it's your job and I, I i want 
um, hopefully in the future for for other players to get paid. Um, okay. Just to make it easier for other yeah. people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how is the you know grading, I would say, or how is the financial setup uh, when it comes to the domestic cricketers? Do you still see a lot of improvement that needs to be done there? Or uh, is it is it at a very standard level? Is it is it stable out there? Um, it's gradually. I know um, what Cricket South Africa does is the they help with um, university. Like so, some of my teammates at Western Province, um, they get help to. They actually get accommodation and also like they get help with studying in university. So you can imagine like. Um, Education is a very big thing, and you still play cricket on the side, like while you're getting your degree. So, for me, um, it's a brilliant thing. Even though you don't get paid, you mm-hmm. still get paid in knowledge, yep. and it's it's amazing. And like I know the coaches, they so invested in making sure that you are happy. And I know personally, my Western Province coach um, and my Northwest coach, like they also invested in making sure that the players got to that level that they wanted to go. Amazing. I think it's one of the best ways to you know, repay your cricketers, not just by actually giving them money, but uh, through education, which is, I, I think, super important for anyone. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Great, great, great. My next question is, uh, oh, now you're 25. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your next vision? What's your next ultimate goal or what if the COVID-19 ends, what is it that you want to do now? And the best part is that now that you're part of the central contract, so that also has some responsibilities on the shoulder. Um, so basically, hopefully I can have like a 10-year career if my body allows. I'll assess the conditions again at age like 32 or 33, <laughs> how I'm feeling. Um, but obviously I just want to have a long career um you never as i said before you never know when it's going to end yeah. so uh it's just setting up things now at the beginning of your career that when you look back you don't have any regrets and i remember uh watching a documentary mark Fauci did and he said i w- i wish like i put money away mm-hmm. and obviously yeah. like um you do get a lot of money uh but i, I just feel like just instead of like spending it just um, invest it or save it all up and uh, what I'm doing now is I'm actually working towards like my business degree um, so hopefully like now with, if it wasn't for COVID-19 I probably would have never done it but I'm actually so glad um, I'm actually working towards that and hopefully by the time I retire um, I can I don't know what the future holds but I know like one of my biggest things is like I want to enter like motivational speaking and Obviously, it's okay. okay. Just go with it. Yeah, um, we'll see. Okay, I'm <laughs> sure you can be a very good speaker, uh, a very good motivational speaker. Yeah, and obviously add your personality into it and see <laughs> where it goes. Or uh, any protocols that you have made to keep yourself busy and fed during the lockdown? Uh, I play a lot of Xbox, FIFA 20. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That, um, answers, that answers it completely. <laughs> coordination, like it works. Um, and obviously, like my brother, he's 14 years old, so he'll help me. So I'm working a lot on my hip flexes because with wicket keeping, it has to be so strong, and my core and everything. So doing a lot of that, just keeping active. Um, and hopefully, by the time we can actually go out to the gym and lift actual weights, then I should be good body weight wise. So, yeah. Okay. 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 Had, had it not been cricket and hockey, let's let's exclude both the sports. What else would you have been, or in your in your career? A lawyer, a doctor, an accountant. <laughs> I would have been a crick. I would have been an athlete. I know it's vague, but I, I can't see my life either than just being an athlete. I remember at a young age, like, it's all I wanted to do. And my mom was like, it's not going to take you anywhere. And I was like, it will. 
so basically you don't want to leave sports uh, you want to surround yeah. yourself with or uh, some of the other form of sports uh, i want to stay in cricket after i retire from the sport but also like i'm very like now i'm thinking to my cousin i'm very inspired in the business side which is so weird for me because it's nothing that i ever showed interest in and like the more he spoke to me about it the more i was like hmm okay that's actually a good thing so i'm going to work very hard and try to get my masters in business and then from there you never know what's your one message for for young cricketers raring to be in the in the domestic uh, cricket or to get into the national cricket team your one message to a south african young girl today um when it gets tough and when you get frustrated just don't give up um because if you give up you kind of go think it's back and then you have to start again um there's no shame in failing but it's how you pick yourself up after that lovely see i told you you are going to make a very good speaker <laughs> baby steps baby steps <laughs> where do you get this motivation from do you particularly follow any speaker any any motivational uh, person where do you get your motivational doses um from? i'm very active on instagram so basically um i'll look at business motivation motivational quotes uh, les brown he's brilliant um but from a young age like for me to play like a proper hockey game I had to listen to motivational speeches before the game. It's amazing. Like I used to put in my earphones and just listen and uh I remember when I had my worst cricketing spell, I never listened to one motivation but then as soon as I was like okay. It just hypes me up. It's like okay, let's get this show in the road. Um so it was always something that I wanted to do but obviously I was very shy at the beginning with speaking. So I never like mm. Okay. Every time I had to stand in front of the class, every time I had to stand in front of the class, I'd be like, okay, I'm smiling. So it was, yeah, it was never, I always knew I wanted to be a part of like the motivational, whether it's writing down quotes, but the more confident I've got in like actually speaking, the more I was like, okay, maybe I can help someone. And my thing is, is just helping. It was great knowing about you, Jafta, about your cricket journey. uh transitioning from hockey to playing cricket uh being on and off the field uh but still you know making sure that you contribute to the team wherever you are given the chance uh our best wishes are with you jafta and we hope to see you in the national circuit very soon and we also hope that this, we also hope that the covid 19 thing ends very soon and we all get to you know see a lot of cricket happening it's to work yeah Yeah I'm also praying for the same thing. Um it was very nice to be a part of this it was really cool. Great great I look forward to more such chats and I am very much looking forward to your motivational speech whenever you start that. I'll tag you don't worry. <laughs> Perfect okay Jafta. <laughs>